Hello, welcome back. In this episode, we're going to be making the block breaker so we can make our own cobblestone. And we're also going to be making the other type of jetpack. So let's get to it. So the jetpack that we're going to be making doesn't actually run off EU or fuel, sort of refined oil, or anything like that. What we need is coal fuel cells. You can also make biofuel cells, but we're going to go for coal fuel just as I've got all that stuff here. So to start the process, what we need to do is take coal dust and put some water cells next to it, just like that. And that gives us the hydrated coal dust. So once we've got that, 44 should be plenty. We then need to put that in the compressor. So I'll just turn that one off so it doesn't go anywhere. And just put it straight in. And it makes this hydrated coal. It's like hydrated compressed coal or something like that. Anyway, so once we've got those, what we can do with those, I'll just show you quickly. We can make, by taking the H coal and empty cells, you can make the H coal cell. So we take those, and if we put those in the extractor, I'll just turn this one off as well, H coal cell, we then get the coal fuel cell, which is just what we need to uh, power the jetpack. Okay, so let's make the jetpack itself. So to make the jetpack, we need to make an electronic circuit. So redstone there and there, refined iron in the middle, and copper cable all the way around. We're also going to need to make a fuel tank, which is just tin, like this, in this sort of jerry can shape, and there's the fuel tank. So, now we've got those, we're ready to make it. So electronic circuit at the top in the middle, empty fuel can in the middle itself, and refined iron down here, and here, with redstone there, and there. And there it is, the jetpack. So, now that we've got the coal fuel cells and the jetpack, all we have to do is put the jetpack in the bottom and put the coal fuel cells on top. Now let's just slowly start to fill it up, and when it does, we will be ready for flight. So, I've got the jetpack all fueled. Let's see, uh, let's see the difference. Whoa! <laughs> well, I've never been able to get up here before. Right up to the top of my... Uh, my wind turbines. That is pretty high. It's pretty high. It's pretty rainy up here. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty good. Pretty happy with that, considering the highest I could get with the other jetpack was about here. And that's if I sort of jumped up. So that's really good. And again, with this jetpack, you can engage uh, the hover mode. So if you hold down M, and it'll hover. It just the difference is with this one doesn't hover up whereas the electric jetpack you can hover up with you'll only hover down with this one I'm pretty sure it, it doesn't kill you let me just check that let's give it a quick test hovering down I'm pretty sure that won't hurt you but there was a bug in other versions where it did no that's perfect so pretty good and uh, you can get pretty damn high with it as well <laughs> That is more like it. So, now we're going to make the block breaker, and this is an excellent piece of equipment. This is going to allow us just to make cobble out of nothing. So, to start with, we're going to have to uh, make an iron pick. That's right, an iron pick. There you go. And then we're going to need to make a piston. So the piston is just wood across the top, piece of redstone bottom middle, iron ingot in the very middle, and then cobblestone down the sides, just like that. There you go, piston. So, uh, yeah, we've got everything here. So, iron pick at the top, piston in the middle, cobblestone all the way down the sides, like this, and then one piece of redstone at the bottom. And there it is, the block breaker. Okay, so now we'll just head outside, and I'll show you how we're going to use it. Oh, I'll just pick up some, some lava. Okay, so... This is my new extension, by the way, and it's absolutely gorgeous, I'm sure you'll agree. Some lovely little flowers there. Rising sun there. Amazing. Anyway, this is the block producer, basically. This is what's going to make the cobble for the block breaker to break. So the design is quite important. It's 
two blocks deep in the middle, see, and then one block deep either end. And that's quite important. Let me show you how it works. So we'll just put a piece of cobble here, and then take a bucket of water and just place it down there, and take a bucket of lava and place it there. So when this block in the middle here gets broken, you'll see that it makes cobble again. See? And that'll happen a million times. It's a very good little system. So what we need to do is just put the block breaker here. So it's a bit tricky to place down sometimes. You can't quite get the angle right on it. To place it down this way. Like that. There we go. So this wooden bit is at the front. So every time this is given a um, redstone signal, it'll break the block in front of it. So let me just show you that. So let's just put this down. And as you can see, it breaks the block. It chucks blocks out of the back. But obviously, this lever isn't really much good. This is a bit useless, to be honest. But there is something else we can make. We can make a timer, which will uh, allow this to just run automatically. They're a little bit complicated to make, but I'll run you through it, and hopefully you won't have any trouble. Okay, so to start making the timer, what we first need to do is make a bit of smooth stone. So I'm just going to cook a bit of this off. Um, we'll need quite a bit of it. I'm not too sure how much off the top of my head. But um, that'll probably be enough. So then we need to take that, and we need to turn that into the stone wafer. So, we've just got a few of those stone wafers. That's probably plenty. Head over to the table start making this. So, we're going to start by making some redstone torches. So, just like that. Just take a few of those. And then what we need to do is start making the components. So, we'll start with the stone wire. Now, we need three of these stone wires. So, it's just three bits of this stone wafer. And some redstone on top. Just like that. Stone wire. So we've got three of those. Next thing we're going to make is the stone pointer. So, stone wafer at the bottom again. Then a redstone torch in the middle. And stone at the top. And there's the stone pointer. So the next one we're going to make is the stone anode. So the stone anode is... Where have they gone? Stone wafers, just like that, three across. And then redstone, just like that. And there it is, the stone anode. And then we need to make the stone cathode, which is just a stone wafer with a redstone torch on top. Okay, so now we've got all the components we need. Start with the stone wafers, just put one there and one there. And then we want the stone pointer, that can go in the middle. Stone wire goes here, here, and here, and then the stone anode, here and here, and then, there he is, stone cathode, just there, and there it is, the timer. So, we'll take this outside and we'll set it up. So, I'm back outside now, and as you can see I've switched this around, that's just because uh, my pipes are over here, so there's no point having the pipes running all the way around that side. So, what we're going to do first, before we put this timer down, is we're just going to sort out the pipe. Now, usually for this, you'd use the hydraulic tubes, but we're not going to use that, because that involves making an alloy furnace, and it, it's loads of faffing around that we don't need to do. Uh, what we're just going to do is kind of cheat, I suppose, and we're just going to put a chest there. So anything that comes out is going to go straight into the chest. And then what we'll do is we'll just put a wooden pipe there, and then a redstone engine and a lever. Have I got a lever? Oh, I've got stick and cobble. Oh, I've got one right there. We'll use that one then. So, lever just there. And then we'll just run this cobble pipe. So run it back this way. Go there. Mind the gap. Go to there. And we'll just send it up that way. Like that. Now we're going to have to put a piece of iron pipe in here so we'll just knock this out and let the stone go everywhere for a minute iron pipe in connect this one up as well just there 
and then use the wrench just to turn it around. And we've got one piece of cobble going the wrong way. That's fine. So now all we need to do is put this timer down. So we'll just put it there like that. And just need to put a piece of redstone on top of that. And there we go. Now this timer you can set. So you can choose the time for it. So at the moment it's set to two seconds. Uh, which is a bit of a long time. Um, we can just put it right down to uh, the minimum, which I believe is 0.2 of a second. But that kind of ruins ruins the look of it, and I do like things to look, you know, reasonable. So we'll just increase that, and we'll do it every every half a second. So it still keeps its animation, still looks quite good. I do like the animation on this. Um, as you can see, it's just a redstone torch with this little connector which goes around and makes contact with that and sends a signal. It's quite good. Um, yeah, so there we go. So that will be pumping out cobble into here. See it's building up already. So we just need to fire up the old redstone engine and that will start pumping it out. So it's a pretty good way of getting cobble this. Um, it's not too much of a cheat. I don't really like cheating to be honest. But this is only for cobble, and to be honest, this one's just going to be to supply the um, the recycler to make scrap. So there's no point having a big quarry going to do that. Um, my world's already starting to get quite laggy from having so many quarries and uh, all the destruction I've done with the destruction catalyst. So um, this is a good alternative, I think. So that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers!